And let's see, current time is okay. Early night. Let's see if we can make it back to town if we run. Wait, let's go left, and then we go up. Yeah, this is where we met the met Anna's ghost. So I think if we just kind of do a little stair step back up, we will make it back to town. Or maybe not. Okay. Can you cast hide while laying down so you can sleep without being seen? Oh, that's a good idea. I don't think that works, though. If only because they probably didn't think of using it in that way. Right. Hopefully we can still make it to the inn before they shut for the night. Knock. You hear movement on the other side of the door. Excellent. After a few minutes, you hear someone removing the bar and unlocking the bolts on the other side of the door. Can you use the hide spell to grab the bird? Probably not. Hi, everybody. Turn to stare at you. Then... Uh, anything new here? Mm, this isn't used to. Nope, nothing new from you guys. Nothing new here. Any rumors? We don't go. No. Oh, never. Oh. Well, no, but uh, you did use pay hey, and. Nope, oh, nope, hey. nope, nope. Seen all that. So let's just have a sits. Tonight, for your dining pleasure, it is the traditional Moldavian chicken paprikash, delicately seasoned with locally grown paprika and garlic. Taco salad for dinner. Mmm. But did it have garlic? A voice from behind the door says, Whoops, sorry. Did I tell you about the time there was this guy walking into an inn with this big necrotor following him? He goes up to the innkeeper and asks for some stew to eat. The innkeeper looks nervously at the necrotor and asks the man what his pet will eat. And the guy replies, anyone he wants! <laughs> Not bad, eh? You hand the gnome the good humor bar. What's this? You trying the old hot pepper bar on me? Hey, I'm the professional, kid. Don't try this at home. Not on a gnome, anyway. Hey, it looks good, though. He eats the good humor bar. Not bad. Pretty good, actually. Hey, I feel funny. I mean, really funny! What was that thing? You tell the gnome about Baba Yaga and the good humor bar. Thanks, pal. Guess this yuck's on me. This jester just can't thank you too much. You're my hero, Nero. My main man, Stan. So, hi, gnome. I've seen heroes come and go, and you're certainly one of them. So, you got by with a pie, I My, my. Always knew the way to Baba's heart was through her stomach. Probably someone she ate. You know what they say about cannibals? Always having a few friends over for dinner. I am so happy that it reminds me of the time Dimlit the Dwarf came across a magic ring in the bazaar in Shapir. He rubbed it, and lo and behold, out comes a genie. I will grant you three wishes, said the genie. Well, for my first wish, I want a place that's always filled with gold, says Dimlit. So shall it be done, said the genie. There before Dimlin appeared a purse. He turned it over, and a pile of gold spilled out on the desert sand. Again and again he turned it over, and more and more gold covered the ground. 
Master, you do have two more wishes left, said the genie. Oh, that's right, said the dwarf. Well, give me two more of these. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm every bit as happy as Dimlet was. <laughs> this gnome be spitting. Yeah, now that he's got his sense of humor back, he might actually be telling some better jokes. I kind of like that one. You know what they say about humor? If you don't got it, you won't get it. And if you don't get it, I'm sure someone will try to explain it at great length. Heard any rumors? A flying rumor never has any trouble making a landing. I heard that the shopkeeper's husband left her because she was such a scold. She was a person who was quick on the floor. When she wanted his opinion, she gave it to him. Alright, hit us with some jokes. Do you know why gnome jokes are so short? So that they won't go over the dwarves' heads! There's no point in telling a dwarf a joke with a double meaning. He won't get either one! Judging from the expression, what you don't know can't hurt you, dwarves are practically invulnerable. Of course, far be it for me to say that all dwarves are just plain dumb. Most are pretty greedy, too. Dwarves get their money the hoard way. They won't even spend the time of day. Dwarves don't care how people treat them, as long as they do. Of course you know what you got when the singing dragon fell into the dwarf mine. A flat miner. And on that note, let's change the subject. I'm noticing a running theme with all of his jokes. Technically, if you ask for two more of these, that's one wish. You know, you're probably right, so he might ask for two more of those, find out he still has another wish, and just get a fourth. Well, now that I'm back in the funny business, it's one more show and I'm back on the road. I'm going to show these yokels that he who laughs last just didn't get it. Some people spread happiness wherever they go. Others, whenever they go. Fortunately, you are the former. If you was the latter, you'd probably have a few rungs missing. Before you blow, Joe, I figure I owe you one. I'm gonna let you in on a secret only we gnomes know. I'm gonna tell you the ultimate joke. Don't wince, Vince. This is straight, mate. You tell this one, and whoever hears it is gonna laugh. Really laugh. Can't help it, can't stop it kind of laugh. Only works once, and should only be used in last resorts, Mort. It's the last laugh, so to speak. The best jest to the West. Yours for the telling. The gnome tells you a rather silly joke. You find yourself laughing despite yourself. See what I mean, Gene? Tell this joke to a big bad dude that's out to do you in, then exit while he's laughing. Use it or lose it. Bye-bye, birdie! Alright, we now know the ultimate joke. You unlock the... Unfortunately, we will never find out what the ultimate joke is. But you know what? Kind of want to be out at night for a bit, so how about we crash, some crash for an hour, get some stamina, get some mana. And let's see, time is almost midnight. Oh, there he is. So you're back. No, it's your front. Take a seat. No, take two. They're small. I got a joke just for you, so don't look so sheepish. All right. Putty Bones' last performance before he hits the road. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and all you others. I'd like to say how glad I am to be here. I'd like to say it. Seriously, folks, staying at the Hotel Mordavia has been like staying at a resort. A last resort. My room is so small, the mice are hunchbacked. I couldn't even complain about the room service. There wasn't any to complain about. And the innkeeper's wife really went out of her way to make me feel at home. She ignored me completely. I wasn't feeling well, so I went out to visit the local doctor. You know, Dr. Cranium. 
He's the guy with the three pairs of glasses, one for nearsightedness, one for farsightedness, and one to look for the other two. I said to the doctor, my heart keeps making a strange noise. It keeps going tick, tick, tick. Aha, said Dr. Cranium. We have ways of making you talk. Next, I went to visit the local store. If you don't know what's up, then you haven't seen their prices lately. And the shopkeeper, what a gossip. She suffers from acute indiscretion. I dislike repeating gossip, but uh, what else can you do with it? And boy, oh boy, the monster's in this place. If I ever come face to face with a revenant, I know what steps I take. Long ones. What would I do if ever I saw a Necrotor? Hope it didn't see me. Actually, folks, I'm up here for a good reason. A jester's ambition is to be healthy, wealthy, and wisecracking. If it weren't for my friend the hero over there, I couldn't make a hyena laugh. So, when you've lost your wit, broken your funny bone, and none of your puns are fun, it helps to have a hero handy. You know, that reminds me very little of the story about the gravedigger who was so bored, he buried himself in his work. You know, I could tell you some more jokes, but you'd only laugh at them. So long and be good. If you can't be good, then be careful. The gnome takes a deep bow and gets down off the stage. That's funny, you always thought he got down off a duck. Ha! The townspeople explode into spontaneous applause. Keep smiling, it makes people wonder what you've been up to. So, was that funny or are you just keeping your mouth shut? Well, it was better. It's good to have my wit about me again. Nothing worse than someone who can't take a joke, or one that tries to tell one and can't. Before you helped me, when I told a joke, people always clapped their hands. Unfortunately, it was always over their ears. Now, whenever I tell a joke, I get carried away. So I'm leaving before they ride me out of town on a nail. <laughs> a short joke there. John Reese Davis, why are you talking for him? <laughs> Did you hear the one about the dwarf who is so dumb, he always stops to think and then forgets to start again? Everything that's said to him goes in one ear and out the other. There's nothing there to block traffic. I can tell dwarf jokes all day, mainly because there are none around to stop me. In another minute, I'm gonna say my bye-bye and fly. I'm going south for the winter, down where the nights are balmy, and so am I. Heading for Silmaria, land of winter waterland, where there's no snow nor cold wind to blow. Up here, the winter is so cold, even the wind howls about it. Someone got the scripts mixed up? I can only assume that's what happened there. Because I find it exceedingly unlikely that John Reese davy voiced both the narrator and this guy. The gnome was very odd and said very strange things. Yet Mr. Bones was very funny this time, and I enjoyed listening to him. There will be no more entertainment acts at this hotel, understood? At least not until a new funny entertainment arrives. I think I am sorry to see the strange gnome leave. It was odd being able to laugh again, if only for just a moment. You know, he wasn't such a bad person once you got to know him. Yeah, except for that drooling problem, we'd welcome him in Moldavia, if he ever came back. I still wouldn't let him marry my daughter, though. You don't have a daughter. Well, that might constitute a major obstacle to marrying her. There are a couple instances of someone filling in for another character in this game. I always assumed it was because last-minute script revisions after recordings were already underway, and some of the VAs were no longer available. But in those situations, would it be better or worse just to either stick with the original recording or hand it off to someone who doesn't even sound like the character. It's such a weird way to handle that problem. 
Gentlemen, I was dangerously close to being amused this evening. I'll tell you, I had a great time, a great time! Laughed so hard I almost lost my lunch. Now that was an evening of, thank goodness, rare entertainment. It was okay. I laughed till I stopped. I'm telling you guys, it was boffo. I even got some of the jokes. <laughs> no wonder John Reese Davies hated this game so much. He got stuck with everybody else's Never lines. So many. It is very. If you we well, it's so long. It's been nice to know you. I like you. I have no taste, but I like you. If you ever make it to Silmaria, look me up. I never forget a friend, especially if he owes me money. But seeing as how it's me that owes you one, I'd better get while the going's good. See ya! Don't take any wooden kopecks! So, everyone, I'll leave you with this story. A man runs up to his doctor and says, Doc, you gotta help me. I keep thinking I'm a goat. The doctor asked, How long have you had this delusion? The guy replied, Ever since I was a kid! That just goats to show you I'm one bad dude. It's been sheer pleasure here, but I'm gonna take it on the lamb and just bleed it. Be seeing you. <laughs> all right, I'm done. I read all the damn lines. I'm going home now. Actually, John, could you do a few more? <laughs> I wonder if he ever did any voice work for games after that. This town is yep, we're just gonna float up and over. We'll just stair-step our way down, and we're going to go towards Arana's Peace. You feel it? Oh, my bad. You're getting tired. Oh, well, maybe not then. Maybe tomorrow. But what we can do... Wait, not Fireball. How's our Lightning Bolt skill? 227. No, wait. Yep, okay. Just blast all of our MP away. float back over the wall. We'll probably have to sleep in the garden. He's done tons, actually. Just scanned IMDb, lots of video game VA work. Okay. You knocked after several minutes. There still has been no response. Okay. Well, can we climb? You're getting some. You're get. You're get. You're get. You're get. You're. 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 And we are out. But we got some good climbing practice. We're only at 108. So we're sleeping here tonight. You are flying in the very source of all magic. You are filled with power and the knowledge of how to use it. You create flowers dancing around you. Trees fill their branches with magical fruit as you touch them. You dance in a circle and the very ground itself radiates peace and harmony. You sing the message of your heart, and the magic echoes around you a song of love and happiness. 
Then you realize that it is not you doing this. It was someone else back in time. You hear that voice calling you again. Darkness surrounds you, eats at you. The voice calls out again and you are afraid. It calls from the center of the darkness, drawing you nearer and nearer. The darkness sucks at you, pulling you towards the voice as it flays all warmth and life from you. You scream! You gradually wake, shaking off the shreds of dreams that cling to your memory. Well, at least we got a full heal. Oh, we can have breakfast. Anytime we don't have to eat our ration sandwiches, it's worth doing that instead. The werewolf threat has ended. Since you have found and rescued Igor, I have released our gypsy prisoner. It seems he was not a werewolf after all. All the peasant fears were for nothing. Hey, Burgomeister. You say hello to the... You are a very polite person. Perhaps I should learn some manners from you for dealing with strangers. Couldn't hurt. You tell the Burgomeister about how much you want to be a hero. I am beginning to think that you must be quite a hero already. I mean, we're the Prince of Shapir because we're a hero. So where's the gypsy? The gypsy has no doubt returned home to his people. They have an encampment to the east. Okay, so he's probably there this time. I will be able to get a real night's sleep for once. I do not have to worry that the prisoner will be harmed or that he will escape now. The people of this town will settle down again. They cried so loudly for blood because they are tired of living so long in the shadow of fear. There is a rumor that perhaps I was mistaken in trying to drive you away from Mordavia. That perhaps you are the hero you claim to be. But you know how rumors are. You cannot always trust what you hear. Well, I guess we technically did lead Nikolai to his death. So, we killed one of them, one townsperson, but we saved Igor. I think that's just kind of a... It's a wash. It's even. You eat your plain but nourishing breakfast. It has more than a bit of garlic added for spice. Ah, so you are back. Yep, I had to sleep outside. Mm, looks like the same options as always. How are you doing? I am back. Okay. Remember in Quest for Glory 2 when we could run around the city and tell everybody how we captured each of the elementals? Kinda miss being able to do that. I suppose you heard that the gypsy didn't kill Igor after all. Dmitri has set the gypsy free. No good will come of it. You mark my words. The man was clearly a werewolf. How did she know? So... And it's the same thing. Boris came back to real. Okay. Rumors. What do you know about the old man's death? They say Nikolai went off to look for Anna for the last time. <sighs> Maybe they're together again somewhere. What do you know about vampires? Ah, vampires? Fires, is it? There's talk that those strangers up in Castle Borgov are never seen by day and can't abide the smell of good old garlic. 
If you are going to do any wandering outside town, make certain you have some garlic with you, just in case. Well, we haven't seen any vampires, but we are carrying a clove of garlic, so that might be That's why. My Gotta go say hi to Dr. Cranium and get our potions for the day. And we no longer have to do the stupid bell puzzle. The door just opens for us. Maybe I should have knocked. Okay, we didn't walk in. I have been preparing a research report to tell the world about my process for reanimating dead tissue. It is proving very difficult. I must omit no detail or the more skeptical of my fellows will doubt my results. And yet, if I wait too long, some other scientists may publish first. Why, it is distinctly possible that there are hundreds, even thousands of experimental scientists even now animating their own corpses and trying to publish their results before mine. Then again, maybe they aren't. You say hello to the scientist. <laughs> I am glad to see that you have survived for another visit here. Mordavia can be a dangerous place. This is a very tired hello. Let's talk about the undead. You tell Dr. Cranium about the many undead creatures abroad in Mordavia, about the rumors that vampires inhabit the castle. There are, of course, no such thing as living undead. Frankie is the closest that science can come to such a thing, and she is a product of science, not of magic. Vampires, Rusolki, Revenants, and Wraiths are the products of superstition and fear. Their existence is scientifically impossible. Kind of want to take him to see one of the many Wraiths that I avoid at night. Anyway, how you doing? I have been very busy lately preparing my research report. If you have any suggestions, this would be a good time to share them. Science! Science is the basis of living an informed life. Without science, there is only ignorance and savagery. With it, we have all the benefits of technology, from such simple things as my potions and elixirs, all the way up to masterpieces like Frankie. Yep, potion. Potion. Genius! Oh! To become a certified genius, one must obtain a certificate of genius from the Positively International Genius Society. There's a bit more to it than that, of course, but that's the gist. I'm the only pig in this area. Process? If I told you about it, it would not be a secret anymore, now would it? <laughs> All I can say is that the process involves lightning, life fluid, and an attractive recently dead corpse. Oh, and considerable quantities of pepperoni pizza, of course. So, report? Publish or perish, they say. It is not sufficient just to be the greatest scientist in the world. One must also strive to be the best known. Otherwise, research grants can be hard to obtain. The key to writing a research report is always to remember this. <laughs> a pen can be driven. But a pencil must be led. Again, John Reese Davies having to make up for somebody else. And I kind of wanted. I would have liked to hear that line in the original actor's voice. It's just. It's so weird that they did that. So, what about the other scientists? Many of the Academy scientists are greedy, self-centered, and dishonest. Some of them have negative attributes as well. It is best not to let other scientists know too much about one's research until one is ready to publish the final results. Right, bye. You say goodbye. If you should come across any interesting sample... Perhaps I should keep the results of the Frankie experiment to myself. I am not sure if the world is quite ready for infinitely agreeable artificial women.
I shall need to explore the situation much more closely to be certain. What a creep.